Hello, I'm Byron Peterson. I'll be talking about experimental observations and modeling of radiation asymmetries during nitrogen seeding in LHD. I'm going to skip this slide. You can read it on your own. In this slide, you can see the evolution of major parameters in LHD during the nitrogen puffing, which you can see down here at the bottom starts at 3.8 seconds and continues until after the uh, discharge uh, terminates in a radiant collapse. The electron density slightly increases during the discharge, as does the radiant power from the bolometer at 3.0 in this plot. The NBI is constant, NBI power is constant during the discharge, and the stored energy is also relatively constant. The H gamma or H beta ratio also stays constant, which indicates no volume recombination. And the probes in the diverters show a decreasing ion saturation current when the neon nitrogen puffing begins. Uh, these two signals indicate that this is a radiative diverter phenomenon, not a detachment. In this slide, you see the bolometric images here on the right from experiment and the synthetic images here in the center from EMC3-Irene for two imaging bolometers, one having a field of view from the top of the machine at the 6.5U port looking down into the machine, and the other having a field of view from the bottom, the corresponding view from the bottom looking to the top of the machine. And you can see the, the, the uh, different X-point traces here. This is the upper helical diverter X-point. This is the lower helical diverter X-point, the magnetic axis. And on the, the view from the bottom, we have the upper X-point here in red again, and the lower X-point in blue. When you look at the, at the uh, experimental images, uh, initially, before the nitrogen seeding, you can see that most of the radiation is localized along the helical diverters. And that is well predicted by the EMC3-Irene modeling here. You see a very similar picture uh, for the radiation along the, the helical diverters. Also, a little bit of radiation here on the outboard edge. Um, you can see that here also in the experiment. Then when we go to the uh, nitrogen seeding, looking at the top port, we see this uh, second stripe developing here, and the radiation along the diverter is not as strong. So you see this strong diverter radiation here, and you don't see that um, here in the, uh, with the nitrogen seeding. You still see this radiation here on the inboard side, um, but in addition, we have the second stripe here that goes kind of through the center of the plasma, through the center of the field of view, anyway. And that can be seen also here in the model. The model shows uh, double stripes in both along both the lower X point and the upper X point. That's because the model is not, this, this model is an 18 degree model, half field period model, and it's not able to to show the, the asymmetry which we see in the experiment. So the asymmetry is evident when you look at the uh, data from the lower imaging bolometer that you use looking towards the top. And so here you can see that double stripe again, uh, but it's going in the opposite direction. But this is uh, also the upper X point. So you can see that the double stripe is, is once again along the upper X point. And so this indicates that the that this second stripe is located at the top of the machine, indicating the uh, polar asymmetry. And once again, you can see this in the uh, in the synthetic image, the, the double stripe here um, that we see in the experimental image. But we don't see this double stripe here uh, along the lower X point. So this is clear that this is a polarly asymmetric phenomenon with this uh, second stripe appearing at the top of the machine. 
In this slide, we show the results of a 100 degree model, a half torus EMC3 irene model, which assumes 0% recycling of the nitrogen. And we are showing two cross sections um, from this model, which are separated by 360 degrees troidally, so one field period. And this is the cross section where we have the imaging bolometer. I'm only showing the one at the top here. We also have another one at the bottom. And 36 degrees away is where the nitrogen is injected. So you can see the strong radiation right in front of the, the injection port. And also 36 degrees away, you can see the, the strong radiation at the top, at the upper X point of the helical diverter. Um, that's because these are directly connected magnetically by the magnetic field lines. In this slide, we show the EMC3 irene model results again at the imaging bolometer cross section and the corresponding synthetic image from the model and the experimental image. So you can see the double stripe pattern in the experiment is reproduced to some extent in the model, although this is a bit more segmented. But you can see there is a, a, uh, another stripe here on the outboard side. In this slide, we look at the effect of the B field direction on the asymmetry. So in these top two slides, uh, this is for negative B field, and this is before the nitrogen puffing, and this is after, during the nitrogen puffing. You can see the very strong second stripe here during the nitrogen puffing. Whereas if you look at a shot, a similar shot, with the positive B field, the B field in the opposite direction, we do not see this, uh, this second stripe pattern. The, the radiation is localized along the helical diverter. So this indicates that uh, there's some effect of the direction of the B field on the appearance of this asymmetry. In this slide, we are introducing a new technique we have developed for estimating the total radiated power using all the resistive barometer signals. This is a weighted summation technique where we assign a coefficient to each Bolometer signal and then sum those up to give the total rate power. And we used um, EMC3 IRENE models to determine what the coefficients were. And this work has, will be published soon in a review of scientific instruments. It's been accepted for publication. So we can use this to investigate the Troidal asymmetries because we can also get an estimate for each bolometer port of what the total radiated power is, which is independent then of the barometer geometry. And we have four, uh, three different ports, 3O, 6.5L, and 8O. And the way those are arranged around the torus, this is a plot, a polar plot in terms of troidal angle. So we have one detector, one set of detectors at 3, 3O, and one at 6.5L, and another at 8O here. So those are the three sets of detectors that we have. And you can see the signals from one discharge here that have been um, normalized at the time of the puff. So you can see before the puff and after the puff, the difference in the four different signals. So those are the three signals from the three bolometer rays and then the total ray power using all of the signals, which is shown in black. Then we take the, um, the signal of these normalized to the, to the total ray power and plot those in a polar plot. And you can see how the signals vary as a function of the troidal angle. The puff location is indicated by the the green cross here. And so you can see in the direction opposite of the magnetic field, the signal increases relative to the total rated power, which is indicated by this black circle at, at one. 
and then in the opposite direction the signal decreases relative to the total radiated power. In this slide we're looking at two shots, one with the magnetic field in the negative direction and one with the magnetic field in the positive direction. And you can see the, the change in the signals uh, in, the, in the asymmetry here. And these are plotted then um, in this polar plot. And you can see the enhancement of the uh, radiation with respect to the, the puffing port location, which is indicated by the, the green cross. Uh, the enhancement in the direction uh, negative direction of the magnetic field and the decrease with, res with, with respect to the total rated power, which is this black line in the direction of the magnetic field. And that's also seen in, in, in this shot with the magnetic field direction flipped. Now, if we take several shots with uh, seating at three different gas puff locations around the machine, and with the two different magnetic field directions and plot them all on one polar plot. You can see the results here. And we have located the gas puff valves at the zero uh, turtle angle location here. And then rotated the data um, for the different gas puff port shots. And then we flipped the um, flip the troidal angle with respect to the uh, gas puff location to account for the change in the magnetic field. So I've plotted the negative uh, magnetic field shots with the asterisk and the positive magnetic field shots with the diamond. You can see all the, diff all the data here for the different uh, barometer locations. And then I've taken the average of all those uh, with this blue line. So you can clearly see the troidal asymmetry, which shows an increase in the radiated power in the direction, uh, in the negative direction of the magnetic field, and uh, then in a decrease with respect to the total radiated power uh, in the opposite direction. Now let me conclude. Uh, we have observed a radiation enhancement with nitrogen puffing that is localized at the top outboard edge region, um, one field period away from the puffing port. Uh, this polyl asymmetry in the imaging barometer signal disappears when the magnetic field is reversed, indicating the role of uh, drifts. Modeling work with the EMC3 Irene model uh, has shown the outboard stripe um, with nitrogen due to outboard radiation, and the 180 degree model shows the up down asymmetry in the outboard stripe. Um, the modeling is B direction independent, so it cannot reproduce the change in the feature with the change in the magnetic field because strips are not considered in the model. Using the resistive bolometers with the with arrays at different troidal angles, we have observed the, the troidal asymmetry in this radiation. The radiation is enhanced in the negative B direction and reduced in the positive B direction, indicating the possibility of a flow of the impurities in the negative B direction due to drifts. This work has been published in uh, Nuclear Materials and Energy, and please see the reference here. Thank you.